Okay, so we'll start with a uh, roll call. Um, Emma. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Linda. Oh, you're muted, Linda. Here. Oh, awesome. Good to see you. Thank you. Rodney looks like he's here, but um, not available yet. So we, we'll we'll see him soon. Um, Kathy. Here. Marilyn Claire. Okay. Um, Amy Sugihara. Here. Hi, Amy. Hi. All right. So, and now we'll start with public comments. And um, as Keith, sorry, Mary. Oh, I'm sorry. Council the barge. I don't know how I did that. I don't know either. Here. Sorry about that. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> okay. So uh, we'll start with public comments. And like Keith said, um, if you have any, if you're commenting on Main Street, um, we're going to be having a discussion soon with Carolyn Mish um, from from the Planning and Sustainability, um, the Director of Planning and Sustainability. And so maybe you could just hold off on those questions until we have a, that discussion. Okay, for, so for public comments. Hi, Jacob. Hi. Um, I I don't know if it is will be if this is the right time is it right time for public comments about sidewalks. Or yeah, yeah, or yeah. We were just um, we're going to be discussing Main Street in a few minutes, so we were just saying if if, if people have questions about that, we'll wait until until we have that discussion, but if it's about sidewalks. Yeah, you can say you can feel free to go for it. Yeah, so just ongoing sort of discussion. Um, I think um, we've I've been to a, a few meetings now um, and just wanted to follow up on um, I think where we what we've discussed in previous meetings. Um, um, some questions about how and what sidewalks are have been worked on, which ones will be worked on, um, and uh, yeah, how to sort of move forward. This is particularly, uh, uh, I, I don't know if urgent is too strong a word, but it's getting there. My son did a, a, a flipped over chair the other day on Trestnet Street when he hit a gap in the sidewalk there. Um, so he was not hurt. My very quick wife was able to grab his chair before he hit his head or anything bad happened. But, you know, I mean, like this is what I think what we want. Everyone I'm sure on this, in, on this call agrees. It's a matter of how we make it happen, but we want uh, safe sidewalks for all of our residents. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I want, I want to be a, 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 a a useful agent for that cause, and I don't know how to be. <laughs> um, have not heard back from the DPW about anything. I'm not sure that I don't know what's going on there. Um, so yeah, I mean, and I understand that this is a long term problem. This is this is an expensive problem. This is not like something you can just mm -hmm. wave your hand at and and make happen. But um, I certainly feel like citizens of our town deserve to know what the process is and what the plan is and how we're going to make it happen. And obviously the world is, you know, who knows where this sits in the priority existentially of, of other problems in the world. But we happen to live in a relatively uh, well-off community that can um, plant beautiful trees and can rebuild its downtown. So let's fix our sidewalks. Um, if we can do these other things, we can fix our sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So that that's my take on it. Um, I just that's my public comment. Thank you, Jacob. Mm -hmm. um, you you pretty much summed up you know everything that I feel about this this the issue and like why I'm on the commission. And um, um, like I we were talking, uh, Jacob and I had been emailing, and um, I suggested to him that he maybe applied to the disability commission um and consider consider joining um and then um i was talking with emma and amy and we were saying talking about maybe starting a subcommittee 
to talk about the sidewalks and um yeah so i was thinking that we, that's something that we could work on soon um one thought that i had or like an idea that i had like right before the meeting is um is like you know like we were talking about how mm -hmm. jacob um he contacted the dpw and they told him that the chestnut street mm -hmm. is not on the list of sidewalks to be repaired so i hadn't had kind of a, just an mm -hmm. idea that maybe like if we had a subcommittee we could make our own list of sidewalks that need to be repaired and present that to the city so yeah that's that's basically what i have right to respond oh sorry counselor yes um a reminder again jeremy which our ada coordinator did a site visit with me and counselor alex jarrett i think about two years ago or three years 15 years we have been waiting mm -hmm. For on um, Florence Road by Florence Heights, a tremendous amount of a sidewalk that needs to be mm -hmm. redone over. It has not made the ADA compliance. So here we've got this big long street with Florence Heights, Brooklyn mm -hmm. Drive, and residents with disabilities are using a sidewalk that's deplorable, deplorable. So you, Jeremy, I'm asking you, how could you answer that 15 years? Uh, what what would you like me to answer? It's a mess out there. It is a mess out there. Oh, sorry. I'm just wondering I'm what you're- I'm talking about what? all our sidewalks that need to be done. Yeah, I think they should be done. I agree. Um, I'm now, thinking that we should maybe make a list of the sidewalks that we think should be repaired. We got to get the money. And that's the biggie right there. The okay. Department of Public Works only gets so much yearly. So I think we're all going to have to put our heads together. Definitely. Find a way of grant to make this happen in our city of Northampton. When I have a street, both connecting to Ward 5 and Ward 6 for 15 years, and it's ADA not compliance, I have a problem with it. To me, yeah. people, no matter what, what your age is or whatever, mm -hmm. have the right to be able to access a sidewalk with a good quality of life, and it's not happening. I completely agree. Um, Amy, did you have your hand up? I did. Thank you. Is it okay to to keep talking, even though this is public comment? Because I would like to say something, but I don't want to take from public comment. I think it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I would love uh for the commission to write a letter or an email. A letter feels a little more uh, substantial and formal um, to the mayor so that she knows the conversation that's happening here. So we're not in an echo chamber, but we're translating. Um, to her the needs that are coming before the commission um, so that at least there's that connection. Um, I don't I don't know what will come of it, but I think that's an important step that we take. Right. right. Definitely. Uh, Councilor LaBarge? Yes, also too, Amy, we need to look at the big picture is the funding, okay? That is the big problem here. And I think we need to look at Senator Joe Comfort and State Rep. Mm -hmm. Lindsay Sabadosa somehow getting money here for the city of Northampton to make our sidewalks ADA compliant. We need to go to the outside. The mayor knows a consultant was hired and we're not on the list. I have a problem with it. So I'm suggesting that the Commission on Disability really look at the big picture here. We need to look mm -hmm. further and look at our Senator Joe Comfort and State Rep. Lindsay Sabadosa to help us. Yeah, help that's a good us. idea. I knew you would say that, Jeremy, and it is a good idea. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> um, I've, I've gotten to know her a little bit, Lindsay Sabadosa, and um, I think she'd be really open, oh, yeah. Same open with to the conversation. Senator Joe Comfort, the both of them. Cool. Um, Jacob? Thank you, uh, Council 
over. Uh, I, I agree. Look, you know, funding is obviously going to be key. Um, I'm curious about the current funding. Um, I've been told, I think I mentioned this previously, mm -hmm. um, that there are, there is something like $170,000 a year earmarked towards sidewalk fixes that came out of that 2020 um, assessment um, that was the follow-up on that 2018 report where the guy had the wheelchair is walking around with the machine that, you know, that checked the angles and the bumps and whatever. Um, in any case, I'm, I, I, I don't, I'm curious about that. If, if maybe another thing the commission could do is request a follow-up report on what's been happening. Um, uh, you know, we, I, I think that it's important to recognize the progress that's been made, if any has been made, so that we can encourage that to continue. And I, I, what I'm worried about though, is that that money is not being used appropriately. And here, here is my question. Um, you know, the, the ADA, you, you, sidewalks don't have to be repaired until the road itself. Mm -hmm. is repaired. So uh, I don't think you have the force of law with the ADA to say, fix the sidewalk. You can say, sorry, this is grandfathered in until the road itself is repaired, at which point the sidewalk then has to be repaired. I'm concerned that what might be happening is that $170,000 is being tacked on to projects um, to fix sidewalks next to roads that are being repaired, but are not necessarily, you know, uh, the, the priority sidewalks based on the report. Um, I don't know. I don't want to accuse anything. But I, you know, I do think it's important to find out how that money is being used. Um, it was meant to fix sidewalks, not not any sidewalk, uh, but sidewalks that were on this list and prioritized by this uh, assessment report. Um, that's my question. Yeah, Jeremy, this is um, seeming more of a conversation. And I think um, you know it's really for public comment and. This it looks like there's more people that join the room, so um, okay. I think we should look at putting this on on the agenda item for, for the next meeting. meeting. Um, and the commission members they should um, you know, just hold further comments and that going forward for the rest of this meeting, and then we should mm -hmm. ask if there's any other public comments. Okay, that are not about Main Street, um, because um, it's we're getting to the meeting here. Okay. So yeah, we'll put that on the on the next agenda and make sure we continue that conversation next month. And um, are there any other public comments um, that are not related to Main Street? Okay. So um, we're, we'd like to talk about Michael Morton and um, get, if it, um, talk about him. He a member of our commission who passed away since our last meeting um and he was able to attend our last meeting which was great and i i feel i feel great about that um and and so we just wanted to like use just to, um this time right now just to recognize michael morton and ask if anyone has any words they want to say about him mm -hmm. councillor labarge yes i've known michael for quite a long time being on the commission on disabilities right now mm -hmm. there's not one member here who was on the Commission on Disabilities with Michael Norton? I was. Yes, Linda, I was just going to say, <laughs> you did. But about what, a couple of years, Linda, I think, with Michael? Between 2010. 10. Ah. Who's that? I don't remember 10 years on that. Yeah. No, sometime between the years of 2000 and 2010. Okay. All right, because with Pat Shaughnessy and Linda Desmond, were your, they your ADA coordinators? Mm -hmm. I don't think Pat Shaughnessy was. Shaughnessy was. Yeah, Linda. Shaughnessy. Exactly. But anyways, Michael's been with us for a long time, a long time. Always offering to help in any way <laughs> Michael could for us on the Commission on Disabilities whenever we had Mm -hmm. fundraising going on he was there he was there at the senior center to help us very caring man i was very surprised when i read that in the paper it had to happen quickly or whatever and i just saw him like three months ago 
down to stop and shop and we talked for a while. He looked healthy. I couldn't believe what I read. It's very sad. We've lost a very good member. <clears throat> Absolutely. Anybody else like to, to speak? Amy? Sorry, I see uh, Alan's hand up. Oh, okay. I, I can wait. Alan? I really hate niggers. All right, that's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, so uh, I, I just removed that. him. I, I kind of figured that was going to happen. Um, the, he had two names, and then there was another person that had some joking. Um, so I'm just be mindful of those names coming back up. But um, yeah, that's unfortunate that that happened. I heard that something like that happened recently at the mm -hmm. recent city council meeting. It's just awful. It is awful. Sorry Can I make that. a suggestion? Um, you know, you ended your public comment for this um, for the meeting, so you don't mm -hmm. have to take comment from anybody other than the committee members. That's right. Um, okay. Thank yeah. you, Carolyn. Thank you, um, Amy. I'm sorry that you got cut off. Yeah, sorry that um, throws me a bit. Um, I, I really appreciated Michael's voice um, every month. He spoke with um, sincerity and always creative and kind. Um, I mm -hmm. actually never got a chance to meet him in person, um, which I'm quite sad about. Um, but I, mm -hmm. I feel even, even without that, I feel this closeness with him from the hearing his voice every month for um, well over a year. Um, so I appreciate his presence and will miss his voice. I mean, so will I, yes, he, he, he will definitely be missed. <clears throat> okay. I'll just say that uh, I, um, got to talk to him a lot over the phone uh, about uh, the meetings and stuff like that. And uh, I printed off, uh, he didn't have email, so I printed off the agendas every month and sent them to him. And I was always really happy to write write the envelope um, and send out to him, knowing that that's how he received it. And he, I knew that he was going to show up uh, on the phone. Um, and yeah, it was really nice to hear his voice. It really was. Yeah, I, I always appreciated his hit when he chimed in and his suggestions were always awesome. Uh, Marianne? Um, Keith, did you ever find out what happened to Michael? Mm -hmm. I did not know. Oh, nobody knows. <laughs> okay, Any, anyone else would like to speak? Okay, uh, um, so we were going to um, have a discussion with Director of Planning and Sustainability, um, Carolyn Miss, about the Main Street redesign. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, thank you for having me. Good to see everybody. Um, so I'm here. I was, um, I had a conversation with Jeremy and um, Amy, as well as um, Emma, about Picture Main Street. I thought it'd be a good time to check in again and really, as the project for the reconstruction um, of Main Street moves forward, um, there's a lot more detail going into the plans, and it can be um, there has been some um, misunderstanding out there in the public about what what changes are being proposed. What what changes aren't going to be proposed. So I thought it would um, be a good time to check in and target the, you know, we can go into a lot of detail um, about different sections of Main Street. Mm -hmm. And I thought um, I could run through the map and we could go through some <laughs> level of detail and then I'd be happy to answer any questions okay. that people have. But in particular, I'll, um, I wanted to, I'll start a screen share here. Um, 
so we can talk about all the modifications and maybe if someone could give me a thumbs up to make sure they can see the screen. Um, that would be great. Thank you. Um, and um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit just to make sure, and I may be covering territory that folks already know about the project, so um, I hope you'll um, ride along with me just in case um, there are those who aren't as familiar with it. Um, I just want to make sure that um, everything's clear. And I'll start out by, this is a long map, but um, up here in the left corner where my cursor is, I'll zoom in a little bit more, but I just want to start out by saying this project is about a half a mile project, um, starting at the gates of Smith College on the west end of downtown, running down through Main Street through four intersections, all the way to the Market, Holly, um, Bridge Street intersection on the other side of the railroad tracks. Um, and so what I thought I'd do is just start explaining some of the improvements that are being proposed um, that are going to, um, um, I think, address both um, sort of a whole panoply of, of issues and concerns that we've heard raised over the decades um, relative to our downtown. And they relate to safety, accessibility, community vibrancy and um, environmental impact and improving the environmental quality of our downtown. And so I'm going to start at the west end, um, at the intersection of West Street and um, Main Street and Elm Street right here, where you see sort of the green crosswalk markings and the black crosswalk markings. That's, the, that's right at the gates of um, Smith College right here. Um, and really to talk about safety as we go through the corridor um, and the questions raised at the beginning of the um, meeting through public comment about sidewalk improvements. Um, we certainly have um, a whole city full of sidewalks that need to be upgraded because they haven't been touched in decades. And Main Street is, is um, right up there in that category. And so, um, a lot of what's the, the great thing about this project as it relates to safety and accessibility is that all the sidewalks are going to be rebuilt on Main Street. Um, and starting uh, um, up at this intersection of West and Main, the intersections, the other thing that's addressed the safety of the intersections are going to be narrowed. Um, so there will be shorter crossing distances for people on bicycles, people who are rolling, people who are walking. And so that will make it safer um, for those people who are not in cars that are accessing downtown. And every single intersection um, in this project is will see um, a shrinkage of um, the dimension across those crosswalks um, as part of this project. Um, so moving down towards State Street and the Academy of Music, um, there'll be slight shifts of where these um, intersection crossings will happen. So um, because the um, geometry of those intersections are going to be narrowed, it gives an opportunity to um, relocate some of these crosswalks with the, the whole goal of making it safer for all the users of this of the network. So um, walkers, rollers, um, cyclists, and people in cars. Um, and um, the red dimensions here just show the, um, the width of the, the new width of the crosswalk dimension. In some cases, we're reducing that crosswalk um, by upwards of 20 to 30 feet, if you can believe that. Um, our street is very wide, so we have a lot of room to play with, but that also gives us an opportunity to really make it safer. Um, so of course, along with the sidewalk reconstruction means that all the ramps leading down to the sidewalk will be accessible, um, compliant with the most up-to-date um, um, ADA requirements. Um, and the width of the sidewalks will um, be expanded to both provide opportunities for um, 
restaurant table space, but also for a through passage of those people who want to walk or roll side by side, there'll be um, wider dimensions to allow that. It also means that people will be able to um, get off of the sidewalk and take a rest in the furnishing zone, which will be completely separate. Um, that's represented in um, the, what we currently have is a brick pattern here. And that's the way it is on the sidewalk um, on Main Street now, um, but that will be expanded. So there'll be clear delineated space for benches, um, trash receptacles, the trees, um, meters and that sort of thing will also be located in this furnishing zone. So it'll be completely outside of that throughway of the sidewalk, which will make it easier for passage. Um, I'm just gonna roll um, down this plan here towards, um, this is Center Street and Pulaski Park is on the lower part of the screen here. So the, again, these, this crosswalk from Pulaski Park across to what's now T Roots Restaurant on the corner here will be narrowed um, and um, the sidewalks widened with that. Um, there will also be a wider bus loading zone in these areas. So this pink shows the bus lane, but there'll be um, a new um, Mass Department of Transportation compliant bus loading area that's completely separate from the sidewalk and the um, travel way for bicycles. And so that's what you're seeing here with this dimension next to the, the pink stripe. It'll be slightly smaller across the street, um, while there'll be a, still a designated bus pull-off um, area for buses um, and, and also a loading space for passengers to get on the bus. Um, as we get into sort of down near City Hall, I wanted to show some um, improvements that I think um, are part of sort of meet not only the safety, but the accessibility um, improvements for Main Street. And that is that we're, um, we currently have a mix of parallel parking spaces that are um, accessible parking spaces, and we have angled parking spaces that are for um, um, accessible uh, for cars and vans and other vehicles uh, where people um, with mobility issues need extra space to load and unload. And um, what's happening in this design is if you see here, I don't know if you see my cursor circling around, this is a space designated across from City Hall. It's a parallel parking space. Um, however, it's going to have the full buffer around the rear and the side, which is not present now in our parallel parking spaces. Um, so this meets the um, standard, the standard that we're currently not meeting, even though we have an um, signed and labeled space, we don't have the same kind of room that this new Main Street design will allow. I, I want to point out that this isn't the final layout because even this year, the accessible um, parking space um, standards have changed. And so um, these plans will be updated to incorporate those new standards. The spaces are getting a little bit wider and deeper. Um, and um, so that will be part of this plan to meet the most um, current requirements under ADA uh, for parking. Um, as we sort of move to, the city hall um, steps here. This is, it's hard to read because there are lots of lines on this page, but um, if you see this little bicycle symbol here and a very light line, this is the existing curb in front of city hall. And this heavy line here is the new proposed curb. So it'll be extended out about 20 feet beyond the existing curb and really narrow and shorten that crossing distance that's right in front of City Hall right now. What that will do is allow much more space in front of City Hall for gathering. Um, we know that people like to use that area for protesting or celebration. Um, and right now people are spilling into the street sometimes because of the size of the event. So this will um, provide more safe space for people in front of City Hall. Um, and as we move to Crafts Avenue, 
Um, the other thing that's important to note about pulling this curb line up is that the crossing will also be pulled up from the hill and be level at the level of Main Street. So you won't have this angled slope of trying to cross that crosswalk on both Crafts Avenue and Old South Street um, further east as we go. So we know, we heard that as a big issue um, in the design process that these crosswalks are really problematic for people who, are, who have mobility devices and um, need to make that crossing. So we're really um, excited that this change will um, accommodate that. Um, as we go down the block here, I'll just show the same situation will occur over here at where Old South Street comes up. So again, that crossing comes up closer to the top of the hill um, to have a more level crossing there. We also here are showing some angled um, accessible parking spaces to together, again, meeting that new dimensional requirement for um, side access and then a land, a clear landing area to the sidewalk. Um, there'll be a ramp right from the parking spaces here. Um, that's the same situation as the parallel parking space where people can um, access the sidewalk from a ramp right next to those parking spaces. Um, so as we move down Main Street, we've got um, more accessible parking spaces on the south side as well as on the north side. We have a total on Main Street right now of five accessible parking spaces. Um, when this design is constructed, there'll be seven parking spaces that so will add two more. Um, and there'll be more of a combination of parallel and angled as we heard through the conversations from people have, people have all sorts of different needs and wants um, for the way that they access um, um, downtown parking spaces. So we're hoping to accommodate, um, accommodate those. And um, just, uh, Moving along here towards Center Street, um, one thing I wanted to note, and, and this, the plans are really getting finely tuned between now and the and the and um, when we reach what's called 100% design of of the plans. Um, but at this intersection of um, Center and Main Street, you all probably um, are familiar with the granite steps that go up because of the topography to some of these stores. Um, at this corner in particular, there's a long stretch of maybe four or five buildings that um, um, are currently accessed with granite steps. The opportunities to make the sidewalk um, meet um, ADA also will allow a gradual ramp up from the very edge of what we have now is those granite steps so that um, there'll be um, a way to access those buildings, at least from the public sidewalk to those private building faces. It will be up to the private property owners to make that final connection into their stores. But for, for the most part, this will bring a level landing up to the fronted, front part of those businesses. And there'll be, um, a sort of retaining wall or a little bit of a wall there um, where the steps are now on the side. It'll be very much like the treatment in front of local burger on the other end of Main Street at the corner of Strong and Main, where there is this similar ramp up to those businesses, but also steps down and it runs parallel to the sidewalk. So that's the sort of treatment that um, the designer team is um, going to um, um, detail at this corner here. Um, staying on that same north side of Main Street, um, the and moving across the block to in front of the first church's um, plaza area and what's now Urban Outfitters. This is all public space, and we the curb is being pushed out again to sort of narrow Main Street, so it provides an opportunity to rethink some of this public plaza space in front of the church and urban outfitters. Again, this is a, a gathering space traditionally in front of the first church. So we wanna think about what makes sense um, 
to continue to allow those opportunities to um, organically happen in front of First Church and um, other programs that First Church might have um, can also be accommodated with these changes. So we're still looking at the details of that design, but this is another sort of off street important improvement that is part of this whole picture Main Street um, project. And um, I just wanted to highlight that it's sort of still in the works. Um, and we're as we move down to the main intersection of Pleasant King and um, Lower Main Street, um, again, there'll be sort of a, a curb extension at this intersection to narrow the crosswalks. Um, and um, this is probably a good time to talk about the other changes that will happen in the signals and all the traffic signals along Main Street. That is that um, right now, and particularly everybody knows about the sort of all way pedestrian crossing at this intersection, that will be changed so that pedestrians will be going parallel with traffic. What that does is it helps um, reduce the amount of time that the pedestrians are waiting to make that crossing. It also reduces the amount of time for vehicles to be waiting for their next turn at the signal. Um, however, built into that is um, what's called a pedestrian phase that is a leading pedestrian interval, which means that there will be times at which only pedestrians can cross and all the cars are stopped. And it allows pedestrians to get out off the curb, walk, roll, um, move forward into the intersection so they're much more visible um, when the vehicles start traveling, the pedestrians will clearly be there. And so they're, they're, that's the safe way to have a pedestrian crossing at a signalized intersection. And that's going to be incorporated in this plan as well. Um, and just moving down to the lower end of Main Street, this is where we already have two lanes of traffic that, uh, where there are much higher volumes of vehicles that are moving through this section of Main Street, but we have two lanes of traffic and parallel parking. There'll be a parallel, a buffered, what I'm referring to as a buffered accessible parking space here, sort of in front of Florence Bank. Um, and then there'll be an, a, a shorter pedestrian crossing um, right before the railroad underpass um, to go um, uh, to cross at that location. Um, and then as we move down under the overpass, railroad overpass, um, the changes that are happening under the bridge here are that uh, a row of parking will be removed from underneath the bridge. As you all may be um, familiar with, it's really hard to parallel park against that big granite abutment. Um, so in favor of um, redistributing the parking um, on the north side, there'll be parking, but it'll be um, away from um, that granite abutment. So it'll be easier to use um, and you can open both sides of the car um, doors uh, on that side. And then on the south side, there'll be um, just the bike through way till we get to Market Street and Holly Street. And this is about the, this is the terminus of the project. There'll still be some slight um, bump outs of the um, curbs in these locations, but this intersection is the one that's seeing the least amount of shrinkage in terms of crosswalk because the crossing distances are already um, smaller than everywhere else on Main Street. Um, and so that takes us to the end of the, the eastern end of the Main Street project. Um, and I think, and I'd be happy to go through any other details or questions about other elements of the project, but I wanted to touch really on those, the safety and accessibility um, components of Main Street for each of these intersections. And I can stop screen sharing if that's better for everybody. To be able to ask questions. Councilor Barch. 
Oh, you're muted too. <laughs> thank you, dear. Yep. Anyways, I want to thank you for being here today. And you know how I feel about all of this, Caroline. You've seen me in, in with the mayor, with residents. The miscommunication has been awful, awful. Until people call me and I tell them what's occurred from 2005. Mm -hmm. and they say, what? And I said, yes, I was part of that. Bill Dwight, I, Bill Sullivan, and working our way to every counselor who was in office have come and worked very hard on making the redesign of Main Street. And there's history to that. Mm -hmm. And as a counselor, this was not easy for me. This, I think, one of the hardest things right here. And I got a wonderful email from our previous counselor, Bill Joy, of being strong about it. I could not say no to this. I went to the mayor and said, we need to keep some of that angle parking over by Thorns Market in that area. It's there. It's there. A lot of people have been told things that have nothing to do with what is designed, even in our resolution. It's all facts, facts. And Carolyn heard it myself with a couple of my residents about people coming down Main Street are used to traveling fast so they can get to Amherst. That is not what this is all about. It's to slow down to the best that we can and bicycles have a right to be on the road just like anybody else. And I think this plan is adequate. It serves everybody, everybody to become safe. And from 2005 on, there's history to all this. And I can remember going and attending all these meetings with Wayne Biden right down the line and now with Carolyn and a new mayor. And 2005, the Transportation and Parking Commission, the Board of Public Works Planning Board and the City Council all endorsed the Municipal Transportation Plan. And we go on again in 2005, the planning and parking and the Board of Public Works, they held meetings to consider the Northampton Streetscape Improvement Plan. And that was intense, intense. And many people attended those meetings. 2008 was a biggie, a biggie. And we were very helpful in designing this resolution. Many of, of counselors, previous and now. A lot of work. And after 28 months of intense engagement with the public was being held, 28, 28 months. That's a long time. <laughs> So we go on, Carolyn, right? Whereas from that 2008, after 28 months and all that public engagement, what did we what did we find? What did, what happened with all this? We're adding on helping bicyclists, transportation in the city, making it sidewalk are safe in our city. It's happened. It's happened. It's here now with the redesign of Main Street, and I think. Everything is going to work out where we're all going to help our businesses in Northampton. People, many people with disabilities. In Ward 6, I have a lot of people with disabilities. And they're happy about the angle parking being placed there, wider sidewalks. This all has happened since the 2005 year and on. I could never say no of not being a sponsor to this because we work tirelessly to make this happen in our great city of Northampton. And a lot of people don't like change. And I hear that, I hear that. And I think this change with Carolyn now, Wayne Biden's gone, the mayor, we've been through a lot of hearing things that have not been right at all. So I just want to say, I want to thank you, Carolyn, again and again. And th oh, you're muted. Yeah, you're muted, Counselor. Jeremy, I don't know why that's happening because it's going off on itself. 
Oh, sorry. That, 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 that sucks. That's strange. Somebody doesn't want me to say anything about North <laughs> Main Street. But I'm happy about this. And I have to say, our director of planning, Carolyn Mission, her staff, everybody, the mayor and her office, all of us counselors are working tirelessly from 2005 and on. And they'll be there to speak in reference to this. So please, please understand that the sidewalk situation, which I know you did have a meeting with the mayor, I heard all about it, and with Carolyn, and I'm glad you did that. Because it, I, I you, felt that it went really well. Um, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And it had to be done because there's such bad communication. And there was another meeting Monday with the redesign of Northampton. And I got calls on that one also. And a trial run, the mayor explained, didn't she, Carolyn, why we could not do that. Impossible. Totally impossible. So that's settled. That's over with. So uh, anyways, I want to thank everybody on the commission for doing what you did and having that meeting because that was the right way to go. Thank you, Carolyn. Yeah, I, I I agree. I felt really good about the meeting and I'm looking forward to having like an open dialogue with the mayor and, and Carolyn as this, as the plan progresses and, and um, just, keep, you know, we'll just, it, when we have concerns, we'll just, you know, we'll talk to the mayor and Carolyn and, and yeah. um, I'm, I think the wider sidewalks is going to be amazing and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, okay. um, let's see. Um, oh, um, one, one more thing to announce. I left Keith a message today, very important message. Councillor Nash and I talked this morning. He's going to be with the Youth Commission tomorrow. We have the Chamber of Commerce. We have a lot of people who are in full support of this. My question is that Councillor Nash said, you're going to be at that meeting today, Councillor. I said yes on the Commission on Disabilities. We would like a letter written from the Commission on Disabilities, which I left that message to Keith, to send to our city clerk in reference to supporting the um, redesign of Main Street in Northampton. And if that could be sent to our council clerk in reference to every one of the counselors of your full support, and also Jim Nash, our council president is going to read that off. We have a lot of a lot of letters coming in and people speaking. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I, I do want to ask um, Nan to speak because she had her hand up for a while. Hi. Hi thank you. Um, Carolyn, thank you for that presentation. That was excellent. I It just rose one question for me about the bus shelters, and I wasn't sure if the bus shelters that are currently there are going to be adjusted, amended, updated in any way, if we're going to add any bus shelters. Um, how are the bus shelters incorporated into the redesign? Um, sure, I can answer that. The um, bus shelter at Pulaski Park is off of the right-of-way, so it's in the park. So that's going to stay, that's going to be um, changed. Um, the only, the other two bus shelters, so there's one in front of the courthouse that um, will um, probably stay where it is, although the loading and unloading zone will be built into the street. So there'll be shelter space and then when the bus arrives, um, um, riders will um, cross into that uh, if they're taking shelter or sitting, they'll cross over into the loading area. The and the shelter as well um, by the post office is not changing. That's a little bit. That's just beyond the project extents. Does anybody have any questions for Carolyn? Emma. Yeah. Um. Hi, Carolyn. I really appreciate you bringing the information about number of uh, accessible parking spots on Main Street now and um, also in the redesign. And I was just wondering 
if there are going to be any changes to any of the accessible parking spots that are like right off the corners or anything like that, you know, like right around the corner at the intersections on Main Street. Yeah, so the only changes to the parking spaces will be on Main Street itself and not to the side streets. There'll be some, the curb lines will be essentially smoothed back into the existing curb lines on those side street uh, um, access points. But I don't think any of the spaces on the side streets, I'm just quickly looking through the plan again to make sure I'm not missing anything. Gotcha. But it's they really just sort of wrap a short distance around the side streets. Okay, great. Thank you. And mm -hmm. thank you for taking the time to come in and explain or present all of this again to us. Keith, are you, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Emma. I just no, saw, no, I just saw Keith right. put his hand up. Yeah. Uh, Keith, what? you had your hand up? Uh, oh, Emma, if, if you are still talking, I can wait. Oh no! I sorry. I that I'm was dead. my fault. I just kind of like shine, I just interrupted. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Carolyn, I was when you're going through. I only just now thought of it. I guess because you know the kind of the bus shelter near Shelburne Falls, um, kind of near Ed, Ed, Edwards Church. Not the shelter, but the spot um, is kind of being more formalized and looks like it's getting more space and kind of being delineated, deline delineated. But we're keeping the one in front of the courthouse, and it seems like it's um, kind of we don't need two spots going in downtown. And I'm just wondering, you know, how many parking spaces we could um, get if there was only one bus stop if we removed the courthouse one, you know? Um. The courthouse one is the main stop going westbound, and that's why the shelter is there. The bus stop um, actually is being moved from in front of Shelburne Falls back to um, just east of that intersection. So basically, it'll be in front of T Roots instead of Shelburne Falls. And it'll be a little bit narrower because it's not used that much. It's, it's just used um, typically um, with, you, you know, riders who want to hop off there or hop on, but there, there's not a lot of activity at that location. Um, PVTA still wanted to have a space on that end of Main Street. Um, so for the time being, it will stay. The good thing is that it could flex in the future. So it's just a painted lane. So if it turns out that it that it doesn't need to remain on that sort of western end of Main Street, that space could flex to either loading zone or additional parking space. Thank you. Yeah. I was just curious what the timeline is on that. You were talking about how um, when we get to 100% design, um, like when, like where are we at now or and how, yeah. how, how long do you think it'll be just curious? Yeah, that's a good question. And, um, you know, it's a changing target. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit about the mass DOT process. So they have um, specific milestones that projects of this type go through. And in April, we had what was referred to as the 25% design um, phase. And that triggers a public hearing, uh, official public hearing by MassDOT. And that is the time at which the design is uh, essentially sets the layout and the curb to curb um, dimension, as well as what's happening uh, between the buildings, building to building. Um, but it doesn't have the details. So once that public hearing is passed, things get tweaked a little bit, then you move on to this, what's referred to as 75% submittal. There isn't a public hearing for that, and there's not a public hearing for the 100%. But the 75% is a place to get fine-tuned the materials, you know, what are those brick pavers going to look like? How are they going to be set? And actually, that's a good um, reminder to me to um, relay that 
those brick pavers that are shown as the furnishing zone are also going to be, they're not gonna be just set on soil, they're actually going to be set in either bituminous or cement concrete. So they'll be stable and they won't um, pop up with um, root intrusion or other, you know, if a snow plow hits it, the, they won't pop out of the ground and make it um, a concern or an accessibility issue um, in the future. Um, but those details about sort of what color and what type of brick, what kind of furniture is going to be selected, all of those details about it, precisely where the curb is going to be located get um, taken care of up to the 75% design, then that package is submitted to the Mass Department of Transportation. We anticipate that will happen in February. And then between February and the end of the calendar year of 24, um, <laughs> we'll be sort of further tweaking of all of those details and getting a package ready that's um, <laughs> 100% design submission for the final um, evaluation by MassDOT before it can be advertised as a construction project. And so the anticipation is that it will be advertised in early 2025 for construction to begin um, towards the end of 2025. Awesome, thank you. Um, counselor? Yes, um, Caroline. When you're looking at the end of um, 24, construction will be starting at that point? The end of 25, end um, of 25. because it takes a while to bid the project, get a contractor in place, mobilize. Yep. Okay. That's the and goal. I, yeah. And I know the mayor had mentioned something about she's working right now with some of the business owners on Main Street and the, and the um, chamber in yes. regards early, which I'm glad to hear that, of working together, working together, very important language there, of helping each other going through the stages of the reconstruction, which mm -hmm. is going to be huge, huge. So I'm happy to hear that, that She's starting already in your department, probably in other departments with the business people, and they should be involved. And I think that's the critical point here of everybody working together to make it happen. That's what it's all about. Definitely. And um, just to, just to uh, add to that a little bit, uh, the meeting that Emma and Amy and I had, we talked about with the mayor, um, like doing a campaign with businesses on Main Street that, and, and talking to them about the possibility of working with, with them to make their businesses more accessible or like you know, to possibly add ramps and to utilize the wider sidewalks to right, possibly build ramps. And so we will be keeping up, you know, keeping up with that and talking to businesses. And I'm pretty excited about that. Yes, definitely. Um, I saw that Rodney had his hand up a few minutes ago and I didn't wanna, I wanna make sure we get Rodney. Rodney, do you have a question? Hi, Rodney. Oh, you're you're muted. You're muted. Rodney, we can't hear you. Rodney, you're on mute. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. I want to thank Carolyn. I want to thank Carolyn. Good explanation. For the good explanation. Redesigning of Main Street. The redesign of Main Street. I am hearing more about the process. I'm hearing more about the process. Speaking of the map, speaking of the map, a of the map of the redesigning of Main Street. Speaking of the map of the redesigning of Main Street, look at it. It was good to be able to look at it. Learn more, more. Not only that, but also the we are cutting with Karen Z. 
un pleyen un peut mentir et te it was good to see about the whole experience of the new design. Thank you, Caroline. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Rodney. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? Okay. Well, thank you, Carolyn. That was really a great conversation. I'm glad you came to the meeting. Thank you, and thanks for having me, and I would love to continue the conversation, especially when we get that, as you mentioned, when we um, get a better sense from our designers what um, private businesses will be closer to being able to meet um, their entryway accessibility um, to work with you all on um, outreach for that process. So. Awesome. Yeah, that's very, very exciting. Great. Thank you all. Have a good night. Good night, Carolyn. You too, Carolyn. Good night. Good night. Okay. And um, so the next, we just have other business not anticipated um, as the next agenda item. So if there's anything, uh, Councilor LaBarge? Right. That's the one about the Commission on Disabilities mm -hmm. and giving clearance for a letter to be written. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to uh, forget about that. Um, Yes. Yes, I'm open. I'm open to signing a letter. I, I don't want to pressure or or um, speak for anyone else. So um, let's. Um, does anybody have any thoughts about about writing a letter and of support? Well, I I think it's important that it be unanimous if it's going to be coming from the Disability Commission. Otherwise, exactly. people mm. could write individual letters of support if it's not unanimous. So. I think we need to hear from every single mm -hmm. person to know. Yes, I agree. Should we take a vote? Fair and yes, definitely. Yes, we should. Be, oh. Yeah. If, okay, if sorry. there needs to be more conversation or if people have more questions or or if we're ready for a vote. Mm -hmm. um, That's a great question, Amy. Um, does anyone have any thoughts before we take a vote mm -hmm. that they want to add or any questions? Uh, Jeremy, do you want to read the letter? Oh, we actually don't haven't written a letter yet. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so first we'd have to write it. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and then I imagine Keith could like share it through email. Is that how it could work, Keith? The letter. Uh, yeah, I mean we mm -hmm. can uh, write the letter and we can have it here the next meeting. Or if uh, I don't know if the counselor needs it right away, but we can certainly bring it to the next meeting and kind of work on the language. Sure. Um, Councillor, does that sound good to you? I, I couldn't hear what Keith was saying. I, I just said, you know, we could bring it to, to the next meeting and just formalize, you know, finish the language if there's anything else anyone wants to add to it. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, what, if you're... What, uh, I'm, what I'm saying, Keith, I don't think you're hearing, is that this Thursday is the meeting final of the vote. Final of the vote, it's not going to come back on that resolution. Sure. So you you would need it by Thursday. Yes. Okay. Or I even if you want to come to City Council, Keith, with it and read it off for the commission, I don't sure. care, Jeremy or somebody. So it sounds like you need it quite a way. I can work with um, anyone to get that signed. Um, that you know. That'd be uh, great. And to you guys. Okay. Um, so let's let's um is I'll make a motion to vote on a letter of support for the Main Street redesign. Does anyone second that motion? Second. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Um, so we'll go off the list here. Emma. Sorry, oh. can I just interrupt? Oh, I'm sorry, Amy. I'm not trying to rush no, no, no. it. No, no. Um, Councillor Labarge, who is the letter for again? Where is the letter going? Yeah. This letter will go strictly, okay? Like you heard me say, Councilor Nash and I talked. We've got the human, um, the youth commission coming in to speak Thursday night in regards of supporting this. We have several other commissions coming in. So, so, so it's uh, going to finish, city council? Let me, let me finish. 
And then mm -hmm. what we're asking for, like Councillor Nash asked me today to present it. If a letter of recommendation of mm -hmm. full support from the Commission on Disabilities of the redesign of Main Street, send it to our council mm -hmm. clerk and CC it to every mm -hmm. councillor. And Councillor Nash is going to go ahead and read off that letter at City Council. He told me to let everybody know that. So, so it's for City Council. Yeah, it's coming to City Council. Yeah, you're voting. The City Council is voting on a resolution. Correct? Is that correct? That's yes. the last vote Thursday. Thank you for that clarity. And Karen Foster. Oh, sorry, you muted yourself. Oh, Karen, go ahead. Hi, Karen. Oh, oh hi. Thanks, everyone. Um, I just hi, wanted Karen. to pipe. Hi, everyone. Um, Council Labarge, I'm sorry. I know you called me today. I've been um, <laughs> flat out all day. I just wanted to pipe in and, and um, you know, I appreciate the clarification. So, yeah, City Council will be voting on a resolution in support of the Picture Main Street project. And the vote for the resolution is Thursday night. And, and um, you know, just speaking for myself as a counselor as well, um, you know, it, if the Disability Commission supports it, that would be a really important voice. Um, as, you know, pe many people who are opposed to the project have kind of use disability as their reason for opposition. And so, um, you know, hearing from folks who, who met with the mayor, who had a chance to, you know, walk and roll Main Street and see what's going on um, would be important if that's the commission's pleasure. Um, and perhaps even, um, you know, a letter could be a relatively, um, you know, simple paragraph, mm -hmm. couple sentences um, kind of thing. It doesn't need to be terribly involved. We just want to make sure that the voices of people who have disabilities are are really represented in the discussion. That's right. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor. All right. Thank. You. <laughs> I think that maybe, like, um, in the letter, we could we could add something about how we're going to have a continued continuous conversation with the mayor about any concerns that people bring up about mm -hmm. uh, accessibility issues and um, just letting people know that we're showing our support but also that we're going to like keep working on it with the city and it's not just like we're not just saying that we support it and then and then it ends there it doesn't end there we'll keep working to you know whatever we need to do to to help basically does that make sense yes oh, thank you for pausing yes council um Counselor. <laughs> Anyways, um, Jeremy, maybe you could possibly work with um, Keith and whoever to mm -hmm. design that, because I think mm -hmm. Counselor Karen Foster, I'm glad she came on because she heard what was being said, because it is very important. Because we're looking at a redesign that's going to benefit for our people with disabilities. There's no question about it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to add before we take a vote? Um, Keith, you think uh, Keith? Yeah, the the letter should definitely say wa uh, walk mm -hmm. and roll. Definitely somewhere in there needs to say walk and roll. I'd like to add that that's an Emma ism, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's an, yeah, Emma came yeah. up with that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, she, she deserves full credit for that. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it can be a quote from Emma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so um, we'll start with Emma. Um, how would you like to vote? Um, I definitely su I support writing a letter in support. Thank Excellent. You, Emma. Uh, Linda, I'm in support of your letter. Thank you, uh, Rodney. Rodney, yes, you support. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, um, Council of the Barge. Yes. Okay, um, Kathy Mary. Oh wait, is she here? I'm sorry, I think she left. No, I think she was still here. Uh, okay, she, she did leave. She oh, she did. Um, and Amy Sudihar. Yes. Okay. 
excellent. So maybe like we could start working on that as soon as people want to, and, and I will be glad to assist. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I'll be glad to assist with the letter. Um, and it, so yeah, sounds good. And uh, is there any other business not anticipated before we adjourn the meeting today? No. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Okay. Uh, Roddy, did you have something you wanted to, to say? No. No, I think he's agreeing with the adjournment. Okay, great. Awesome. Thanks, Rodney. Thanks, Rodney.